You sleep rather soundly for a murderer. That's good. You'll need a clear conscience for what I'm about to propose. You prefer silence, then? As do I, my dear child, as do I. For is silence not the symphony of death, the orchestration of Sithis himself? Ironic, then, that I come to you now as speaker for the Dark Brotherhood. My name is Lucien Lachance, and my voice is the will of the Night Mother. She's been watching you. Observing as you kill, admiring as you end life without pity or remorse. The Night Mother is most pleased. That is why I stand here before you. I bear an offering, an opportunity to join our rather unique family. So... I have your rapt attention. Splendid. Now listen closely. On the green road to the north of Breville lies the Inn of Ill Omen. There you will find a man named Rufio. Kill him, and your initiation into the Dark Brotherhood will be complete. Do this, and the next time you sleep in a location I deem secure, I will reveal myself once more, bearing the love of your new family. Please accept this token from the Dark Brotherhood. It is a virgin blade and thirst for blood. May it serve you well as does your silence. Now I bid you farewell. I do hope we'll meet again soon. Okay, greetings and salutations. Welcome back, everybody. Now you may recall, if you saw the last episode, when I was clearing out hack dirt of its um, evil um, Cthulhu-type cultists, that I killed a few of the cultists that were fleeing, and one that um, was going to report my killing of the other ones as a crime. Um, one of those at least counted as a murder, which is ridiculous, but that's how the game works. Um, so the Dark Brotherhood thought that they could come and retreat or recruit my character, and they're about to find out just how very wrong they are. This is Lucien Lachance. He's the character who, if you want to play the Dark Brotherhood, he's going to be your in. Um, we can actually put him down. He's not protected the way a lot of NPCs are. I think we'll use Winter Splinter for that because I believe he's a spellcaster. Now, you'll notice that he's not wearing the Dark Brotherhood armor, and that's because I installed a, um, a mod that adds a new version of the Black Robe Hand. And though it works for the rest of them, for some reason his character will not equip it. But I'll show you what it looks like in a moment. Your path is clear. Ah! Send Rufio to his death. Ah! Oh! Embrace you as family. Ah! Fire so he doesn't escape. Ha! You'll never take me down. Uh. 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 I'm supposed to be impressed. Uh. Uh. Okay, Lucy and the Chance, the Dark Brotherhood's representative, has been killed. He was my link to the mysterious Assassin's Guild, and now that link has been severed forever. Which is for the best, since we couldn't bring down the entire guild um, due to gameplay mechanics. Which is kind of a bummer, because in Skyrim you could bring down the uh, Dark Brotherhood, I believe, as part of the questline, or even before the questline. 
I just find it ironic that Lucien Lachance made the mistake of not researching my character and finding out that, you know, he's a paladin and probably not the best pick for a new Dark Brotherhood member. Now, if we look, he gave us the Blade of Woe, which is not very powerful in its current state. If you play the Dark Brotherhood missions, it will be upgraded. This is a unique reskin by Insanity of it. Normally, it just looked like, I believe, an ebony blade. This one has a, um, well, it's more detailed. It also has a reddish tinge to it instead of the gold typical of ebony blades in the Elder Scrolls for Oblivion. Uh, he had a short sword. We're not going to keep that since we already have the Coral Honor Blade, which is a long, silver long sword, so better. Here is the unique black hand robe set that, um, for some reason, Lucy and the Chants won't equip, even though the rest of the black hand will. I like the look of it. You can let me know what you think. It looks, um, I don't know, a little more regal. Definitely more unique. I believe the other black hand, the vanilla black hand robe, just looked like... Um, black robes, like mage robes. I believe almost exactly the same as the necromancer robes from the vanilla game, if not identical. Uh, this one has uh, you know, poofy sleeves and a nice chain, silver dagger. I think it looks pretty cool. It's um, also it's got pretty good stats for a spellcaster, an archer, you know. Um, Typical assassin type skills. And when I play the Dark Brotherhood, I'm not sure if I'm going to go like a, a mage assassin and use robes like this, or if I'll go more of the traditional assassin like I normally do and wear light armor. The light armor reskin of the Dark Brotherhood armor is really awesome, so we'll have to check that out. You can let me know what you think of it, and whether you think I should play more of a mage assassin or typical uh, light armor assassin when I get around to playing the Dark Brotherhood, which might be my next faction line. I was thinking of doing that and then going to the Shivering Isles. We'll see how that works out. You'll also notice that I've got a lot of alchemy stuff. I am cheesing the game. Cheese for everyone, as Sheogora says. Um, I am selling alchemy stuff after using it to build a lot of potions. This lets me move up my intelligence big time and um, my alchemy skill. This gives me more magic. It also gives me a nice source of income to sell the potions. You can get a ton of food pretty much everywhere. Inns and barrels out in the city and merchants will sell it cheap. Walk with the you can then use all that money to train. I've been training up my um, conjuration skill so that I can get more intelligence, which means more magicka, and also so that I can um, cast a nice light spell because as awesome as this EMB is, it does make the caves really dark, which I know shows up poorly on YouTube. Alright, welcome back. Here we are in Leowen. I've um, cleaned up my inventory a lot, um, leveled up my conjuration skill. I have an infinite training per level mod that brings back more of the um, the Morrowin style of leveling up your character. This has allowed me to move up my um, conjuration up big time. And so now I can cast a nice um, summoning that will provide light in dungeons, which I believe we're going to have one in this quest. So um, let's get this quest started. Please. These stupid scamps are driving me crazy. I can help you if you wish. Oh, thank you. I had a feeling buying that Daedric staff would be trouble. Now I'm paying for it with more than just some gold. What's this about a Daedric staff? A few weeks ago, a spell sword was passing through Leowin and heard that I liked to buy curiosities. He wanted to sell the staff you see me carrying. I eagerly bought it, knowing the value of Daedric relics. In fact, I was a bit suspicious when he sold it so cheap. His loss, my gain, I figured. After examining it for a bit, I noticed a small word carved on it in runes. Using a book from my library, I translated it. The word was nonsense. However, when I spoke it and held the staff, four scamps suddenly appeared. I thought I was done for. 
Strangely, they all just stood there. It didn't take long before I realised they were following me. I couldn't be seen in town with scamps following, so I decided to discard the staff. I can't explain it, but somehow I can't compel myself to actually let it go. This staff is obviously cursed. Now I'm stuck with it. It's the one staff to rule them all. So where do I fit in in this? I need you to get over to the Mages Guild and talk to a good friend of mine, Alvis Uvenum. She's the only one in town that I trust. I was able to get a message to her earlier, but I've yet to get a reply. If I go, then the scamps will follow and my secret will be revealed to all. <clears throat> Should probably be put to death as some sort of conjurer. Now, I just want to point out that the modders who reskinned Leowen did an excellent job. If you see this uh, pillar in the background, you can see the peeling paint. Just impressive detail. Okay, let's uh, ask her a little more about the scamps. The beastly little creatures are nasty, smelly, noisy, and wrecking my beautiful house. I must be rid of them. I can't let people know I have scamps in here, or they'll think I've taken to Daedra worship. Try explaining that to the town guard. Can you tell me anything more about the Daedric staff? Alves should be able to help rid me of this staff. We play cards at the Three Sisters often and are old friends. Seek her advice. Okay, we'll do that. Alves is a practiced researcher. She's sure to have... Now, where is the Major's Guild? I always get turned around in Leia 1. But I believe it is... Uh, I really don't know. Probably up this way. Might as well just look at the map rather than wondering about. Da, 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 da. Let's see. There's the castle. I think the Mage's Guild is over here. So we gotta go around. Yep. So this quest, um, it's been a long, long time since I've last played it, but it rewards you with a pretty nice magic ring, if memory serves. You could probably already guess now which Daedric Prince is behind the creation of that cursed staff. Actually, be a pretty nice staff if um, the four scamps summoned by the staff were like normal scamp summonings. Pardon me. Poor Rosentia. She's been trapped in her house for days. How do you know? Frankly, the smell gave you away. You must have stepped in. Well, let's just say something that isn't pleasant. Just be sure and keep this quiet. If the other mages even knew that I was involved with Rosentia's new guests, I could get kicked out of the guild. Hmm. Do you know how to get rid of the Daedric staff? Doing a bit of digging, I'm afraid Rosentia's been stuck with the staff of the Everscamp. Nasty bit of fun by Sheogorath, I'd say. Hmm. So, so. The only way she can be rid of it is if someone willingly accepts it. It can't be discarded in any other manner. No one would buy that thing once it's activated like it's been. The only chance is to return it to its original resting place, Dark Fathom Cave. Inside the cave, there's rumored to be a shrine to Sheogorath. That's where the staff can finally be dropped, and the scamps should remain behind. I also learned that the staff makes the owner move much slower than normal. I suppose it's another way the creator upped the annoyance factor. Please, bring Rosentia this information at once. And if you can, help her. I think she's about to crack under the pressure, poor thing. All right. So I was saying that they would be a nice staff if the scamps acted like some normal of my summonings and attacked your opponents, but I think they're pretty passive. 
just getting in your way. Please, I was afraid you wouldn't come back. I found out how to get rid of the Daedric Staff. Oh, please, I beg you. Take this staff to Dark Fathom Cave and get rid of it and the scamps forever. I can't fight, and who knows what's guarding the shrine? Plus, do you know how dirty caves are? It'll ruin anything I wear. Do this for me, and I'll reward you with another one of my curios I picked up a few years ago. A valuable ring. Are you ready? Very well. I'm ready. I accept. Here's the staff. As soon as you leave, the scamps will thankfully follow. Do be careful. I don't wish your death on my hands as well. Right. Dark Fathom See how this works out. I was pretty slow to begin Do with. Maybe Once I have the item. Let's see. How has it affected? Um, it's dropped my speed by. I'm not sure what my speed was before. I think it was around 40, so about 20 points. Be careful and journey safe. It would be nice if they had put more effort into making um, the houses reflect what their owners say. So, if this house was filled with valuable curios, and if you were a thief character, you could come back and loot it, but I seem to recall that that's not the case. There's the scamps. Dark Fathom Cave awaits you. She was certainly in a hurry to get rid of me. Dark Fathom Cave awaits you. Dark Fathom Cave is in the other direction. Can't fast travel to it, so I guess we'll leave through this northern exit. Uh, I seem to recall it's filled with Daedra, so we should go in ready for a fight, which I think I am. Um, Daedra in the Elder Scrolls 4 have a weakness to shock damage, which happens to be what I have on my little hand axe here, so we'll go in with that. We encounter frost at uh, fire astronauts, we can switch to children. I think um, magic wise, um, we'll recast fortify strengths just to give us a little boost. We'll cast uh, the new spell that I have for light. This is summons a will o' wisp, which creates light for you. Other than that, I think it's pretty passive. And I think we'll go with um, the spark spell because even though. This one is more powerful for base damage with their weakness to shock. It'll probably come out being close to the same, but cost less magic each time. Gonna get over all these scamps and whatnot first. Though I like the, the Nest Better Dungeons mod, it does certainly make the uh, caves more busy, which can make it a little more confusing to navigate. A lot of chests here, we'll see if we can get into any of them. for this. I usually play with a steam controller which is rather nice but um, it's a bit hard to do the lock picking with it. I've never been very good at the lock picking in this game to begin with as you can see. To me it just a bit hard to uh, um, determine when it's going slow and when it's going uh, fast until it's too late. Additionally, my um, mouse is triggered, doesn't always register. I'm not sure if that's because of a mechanical problem or if it's something to do specifically with Oblivion. Like right now, when I tried clicking that last time, 
it didn't even register. It makes it a little more challenging. Should probably pull out a different mouse and try it with that sometime. how the dungeon's been um, reskinned using a lot of um, assets from the Shivering Isles, like some of those plants. I've arrived at the Shrine of Sheagoras. I should find the altar and place the staff near it. I got some enemies to deal with first from the sounds of it. No longer feel the urge to possess the staff with the Everscamp. I'm not seeing the enemy. We do see the fireballs. Let's go ahead and place the staff down. Put it right here. And then we'll deal with the enemy when my speed goes back up. I place the staff near the shrine of Sheagoras. The scamps seem pleased with their new home, and best of all, have stopped following me. I should return to Rosentia with the news. I believe one of those scamps is an enemy. I think it's this one. Yep. heavy armor, it might be difficult to find out. See, so I might be able to make this jump. Ooh, flawed diamonds. My wisp is doing a pretty good job of keeping up. An average treasure chest. I think we will attempt to pick this one. Or maybe we'll just use a spell. Magic. I think we'll just use magic. Now, this is a unique looking chest. Uh, the designer of the dungeon mod um, has hidden chests like this in a lot of the caves. I have found some in um, some of the dungeons where I was clearing out Blackbow Bandits um, in previous episodes. Actually, I'm not sure if I recorded the, my clearing out of the dungeons, but I was unable to get into them because they were very high lock level. I think it was very hard. Um, so it's nice to find one that I can actually get into that's loaded with uh, loot. I think there's anything up here. I wonder if there's 
anything valuable up here. I hear the clan fear. Oh! Yep. I didn't ah! like fighting these enemies, ah! particularly with warrior characters early on. Because they can stagger you and you can get stuck in a loop of stagger and die pretty quick. Fortunately, this one's first attack did not stagger me. Because it's only a runt. Let's explore the rest of this cave. This seems better than usual loot in it so far. For this level. I think we circled back to the beginning here. Yep. Let's go back to where I jumped up. And see if there was anything down below. I tend to be one of those types of gamers who um, explore the areas fairly thoroughly. And maybe not every little crevice, but enough to get a pretty good idea of whether or not I'm missing something valuable or a quest. Okay, here we are to turn in the quest. Fortunately, she's not one of those characters that locks you out of the house when you're trying to turn in a quest. So, let's see what she has to say. I don't see any scamps or the staff. As promised, here's the ring. I bought it from a shop in the Imperial City many years ago for an ex-lover of mine. He ran off with someone else, so now the ring belongs to you. The owner of the shop called it the Ring of Eidolon's Edge. I think you'll like it. Nice. It's time for you to leave, my I friend. I believe it increases, um... Blade and Block. Yep. She's sending mixed signals. First she gives me the ring of her ex-lover and tells me that it belongs to me, and then she's telling me to leave the house. It's confusing. Alright. Well, uh, that was a fun quest. I think we're just about finished with um, side quests. I think next we'll be starting on uh, the Knights of Nine quest line, the Pilgrimage. That'll take us all over Cyrodiil, finding different uh, way shrines. I think I have a little map of them. Should be a lot of fun.